Hi guys. I have kind of a big lesson today on watercolor and I wanted to show you how to use uh, liquid watercolors. If you don't have liquid watercolors, which probably most people don't, all of the techniques I'm gonna show you today work just as well with um, the pan watercolors, the ones that are kind of like little squares or little ovals. And if you don't have those, remember we can put our almost dry watercolor markers in a little bit of water and the color will leach out of them enough that you can use it as paint. And another alternative is food colors. These came right out of my pantry. I happen to have the neon kind, um, but I'm gonna show you uh, that they work exactly the same as these liquid watercolors which I happen to keep in these tiny little uh, dropper bottles. And I'm gonna show you uh, some techniques, but I wanted to keep those aside. But I wanna fill in the green. I'm gonna show you, you hardly need any of this paint. A little drop or two will last you um, for some time. And I don't actually clean my palettes when I'm done. I just add some drops of water to reconstitute whatever has dried in here. And I am gonna put some new green, just so you can see, this is the dark green that comes with my, ha happens to be the brand of watercolors that I use. And this is the neon green food color, which I'm gonna put over here so you can see how they're so similar. Now, I'm just gonna add a few little drops there. I am going to add a tiny bit of water because these paints were something that I started on yesterday and I they've dried, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water and show you how I do that. Also, I wanna show you how I set things up. I keep two containers of water. One is for rinsing my brush in between colors and the other is to add clean water, either to my paper, which I'm gonna show you some of these techniques, so you'll know why, or if I run out of uh, liquid liquidity in my paints, um, whether they are the dried uh, cake ones or if the, the liquid watercolor ones. So I have a lot of interesting things over here. I'm gonna show you one at a time, but I also wanna show you kind of how I set things up. I am right-handed, so, all of the things that I'm using are on my right hand side. I'll pull them up a little bit at a time. I have a lot of little squares of paper here that I have pre-cut out of watercolor paper. You can use whatever you've got. I happen to like the texture of this and I have them already cut and ready to pull over so I can show you 10 different things I'm gonna do today. Uh, but let me add some water to this and show you how I do it. I have a big brush here for a couple of the projects that I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just load my brush with water and I'm gonna hold it above the paints just to reconstitute. I'm gonna squeeze a couple of drops. It's very similar to what I've done in the past with the uh, tempera cakes or even the dry pan. So I have my brush loaded with water. I'm just gonna squeeze it. I'm not twisting and I'm not even touching down where the paints are. I don't want any color on my brush. I just want to reconstitute or dilute the new paints that I just put in, uh, that dark green one, just enough to make them liquid. There's the lime green, you won't be able to tell until I put it on paper, but it's very pretty color. And that's the food color that I found in my pantry. All right, so there I have I have a thick brush that I'm using, a great big wide one, because I, there's a couple of techniques I don't want to spend a lot of time on. I'm gonna set this to the side, and I'm going to show you, this is the brush, oops, this is the brush that I normally use for the size of watercolor that I'm gonna be doing. There's lots of different sizes of brushes and types of brushes, but um, I have a reason that I use certain ones. So I'm gonna just set that one there for the moment. And the first thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna wet my brush just to make sure that it is in the shape I want it to be in. I always stir, wipe, and then blot. So really all I've done is get the bristles all heading in the same direction. So to me, I like the brush to look a little bit like a candle flame. I don't like it to be all spread out. 
and I have more control when it's when it's shaped like that. So I never push it. I hardly ever scrub sideways. Sometimes I, I tend to push things sideways, but that's all right. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is just painting. There's no water on here and there's really no water on here. I only just reshaped the brush and I'm gonna just stir into some paint that's already here and I'm gonna paint on here so you can see that this is called paint, just painting on dry paper, wet, uh, pa wet paint. And I'm just going to show you how vivid the color is. I haven't actually added any more water than what I just did a moment ago. And this is the red, it's actually fairly pink. I'm gonna rinse my brush, wipe, blot, and go into orange, it's right next door. I have my palette set up in rainbow order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Then I added magenta, turquoise, and then that lime green. In the center here is a well that I can add another place where I can mix colors. This is the orange, and I'm gonna blend it right over onto the red. So you can see that we end up with a tertiary color there, kind of a red-orange right there, okay? I'm gonna set this aside to dry, and later on I'm going to label all of these, and I will come back after everything's dry and show you what they look like, and I will have them all labeled so you'll know what that technique was called. So that one was painting on dry paper. And now I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm gonna get another clean piece of paper. This technique is called wet on wet. So I'm gonna take the small brush, and I'm gonna put it to the side for just a moment, and I'm gonna take my big brush, and I'm gonna wet it with the clean water that I have here. It may curl a bit. Normally when I watercolor and I go to the edges, I need to tape it down so that the paper doesn't curl. But today I'm moving these little pieces out of the way over and over again. So I'm just going to take my big brush and I'm going to completely wet the paper from edge to edge. I don't want it just drippy wet. And I also don't want it dry just a little bit. It needs to be shiny. That's the best way I can tell that the paint is gonna do what I want it to do. So now I'm gonna go back with my smaller brush and I'm going to go ahead and dip into the green that you saw me put in here and I'm just going to let it spread by itself. Did you see that? The water just grabs the color and pushes it and it looks like fireworks to me. Isn't that pretty? So I'm gonna go ahead and put another couple of colors on here. Rinse my brush, blot, and let's see. I think turquoise would look pretty on there. Let's do blue since it's right next door. This is gonna be kind of dark because I didn't have much water in it. But look at that. And I want them to kind of mush into each other. See how it's kind of leaning over that way because the paper's bubbling up a bit, bending buckling because of the, the uh, liquid on it. You see how it just pulls away? This is turquoise. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let that bleed. Another thing I can do with that, I can actually tip it up and tilt it if I want to, if I wanna move that paint around because I have enough liquid on there. So you can get a very soft effect by letting those colors bleed together. You remember we did this, we did uh, the foil, we put the watercolor ink on there, and then when we sprayed it with water, the water lets it pull and bleed. So that's just those little droplets that I did. Right here you can see the paper was rather dry, so it didn't bleed over into that area, okay? So that is called wet on wet. So the next technique I'm gonna do we're gonna start with wet on wet, but this time I'm gonna do something else. This is one of my little goodies over here on the side. I went into the kitchen and I got some salt. This is just plain table salt. You can also use um, uh, salt that's coarse, you know, that's kind of a little more rocky. Let me wipe this so that it's not wet, my messy mat. 
Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the wet on wet technique again, but this time I'm gonna do one added step and this is really fun to do. I like this, it's very impressive. You may not see it right away. Let me get the salt over here. I'm gonna get this uh, paint and I'm gonna get some turquoise and blob it on there. I love this pretty color. And I'm just gonna let it mush around a bit. When you use wet on wet technique, the water does a lot of the work for you. You don't have to do any really big painting. And I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna add some purple here, just cause it's a pretty color and I like it. And then I'm just gonna leave it alone. And let's put this over here. And I'm gonna sprinkle with salt. Now you may not be able to see right away that this is doing something, but you will in a little bit. And I will pull that back up. But for right now, you can see that the color in the paint is pulling toward those crystals of salt. And the salt is going to do a little chemical routine with it. And it's gonna do some magic that you will love looking at in a bit, but I'm gonna pull that out of the way for right now and let it dry some so you can see some of the other techniques while, while that is blooming for us. So, okay, so we've done painting on dry paper, we've done wet on wet, and we've done wet on wet with an added punch was the salt. So here is our fourth technique. Again, I'm going to start with wet on wet. Here's my clean water. If you have two dishes of water, be sure that you don't also have a cup of water to drink from also because I have been distracted enough that sometimes I have put my brush into my beverage, which is silly, right? Okay, let's put a little bit more water on here. And this time, I'm gonna put some color on here. I'm gonna do the, let's see, what haven't we used yet? Let's use some blue. We did use blue already, but I'm gonna put some here. I love that blue, that how that just pulls away. I'm gonna add some magenta to this. We did turquoise and magenta before. Yeah, let's put some, oh, isn't that pretty? It's lovely. Okay, this time, again, I was in the kitchen. I am going to put some grains of rice on there. And it's going to add some texture that's a little bit different than the salt, but it's kind of interesting. I've tried this doing this with beans, tiny beans. I'm just gonna put this whole thing on here and then scoot it around a bit. And just let it sit. I'm gonna to have to move this over and sit it someplace closer than where I put it the other things. And I'm just pressing it down a little bit. You can see that the rice is blue up there and pink down here. And I'm just gonna move this guy right out of the way and set it aside. That dry, dry my paper here so I can show you another technique. This time, I'm not gonna do quite as wet as before, but I, uh, I do want the, the uh, paint to, actually, I think I'm not gonna do wet. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and paint with my wet brush. And let's see, let's do, let's do this turquoise. This is my, uh, I'm painting with a wet brush on dry paper. No wet on wet this time. And I'm gonna do part of it with the turquoise. And now I'm gonna use this food color that you haven't seen me put on here yet. So I'm gonna stir that a little bit and add, oh, it's such a pretty color. Very, very bright lime green. And I'm 
I'm just going to push it around a bit. And blue and green are next to each other. They are analogous colors on the color wheel. So it's okay for me to blend them because they make a nice third color or tertiary color in there. So here's my lime green and I've pushed it into the blue. Rinse my brush. And this time I'm going to use alcohol. This is regular rubbing alcohol that I would use in the bathroom for um, cleaning things up, first aid, uh, cleaning off the counters, especially now if we have um, germs around, that's a good antiseptic. So I have a straw here. I used to have an eyedropper, but I can't locate it. So I'm just gonna use this interesting little technique you may have done before. I just take the straw, I dip it into my liquid and I put my finger over the top of the straw and it holds just enough that I can drop. Look at how it pushes that color away. And these are really big drops. So it's really nice if you do have something smaller, you can control it. Um, I can also just use the tip of the straw and paint it. So that is alcohol and it pushes the pigment out of the way rather than um, spreading it. So we'll pull this guy, make some interesting color choices. It turned that, that lime green into a bright yellow. And this has a lot of light, light tint to it. So I'll put this, that's to the side too. The next technique we've used before, I know you have probably other than in places where I've talked to you, but this is called wax resist. So for that, I pre-drew this so that I wouldn't take so much time. And what did I use? Plain old handy dandy crayons. And I started off with white, and then I thought, oh, well, wait a minute, maybe I wanna add a little bit of color. So you can see that I've drawn a little bit of things with the colors, but mostly I used white. So I'm gonna show you what happens on this one. I'm gonna paint directly over. I think I'm gonna wet it too, a little bit. Let me just get this done a little more quickly. That wet on wet technique works really well. And I'm not trying to control any liquid right now. Later on, if I want to control liquid, I leave some parts dry completely. So I'm gonna use blue because what I painted here is gonna pop in a moment, you'll see. So I'm gonna use blue for the sky. And you can see what I drew is a kite flying in the sky. So there's my wax resist. I just paint right over my drawing and the wax, again, another trick, it does the work for me. I don't have to go tenderly going around little edges with my, the tip of my brush. It's already done for me, okay? That is crayon and crayons are made out of wax. So that's an easy technique, okay? The next one, I have to uh, give you advice because I don't actually have any stickers. So I am gonna be using something different, but you will wanna use stickers. Stickers are more fun than what I've got here. This next technique is called, uh, uh, you can call it masking, and I happen to be using masking tape, but you can just put stickers on. So your stickers that you get on those sheets or your teacher gives you, um, you as long as they, you can peel them off later, they're perfectly fine. You wanna stick them on so that the, the edges around them are completely sealed on your paper. So this is just plain masking tape. So it's not gonna make a really pretty shape for you, but if you have whatever, hearts or stars or um, happy faces or just circles, or you just wanna, you know, some other, whatever you have, it works. I'm just gonna put an X on here so you can see. You won't be able to tell what, how it's come out until my paper's dry, which again, I'll peel everything off and I'll show you later. But I just made an X on here 
and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to paint right over, where's my, I'm going to paint right over this tape. So you can see, uh, let's use red. We haven't used red since the beginning. I'm painting right over the X and I might add some other color to the to the edges here because it's kind of pretty though, isn't it? But I think I'm going to add some yellow. Let's add some yellow because this is pretty. Again, remember that if I mix red and yellow, I'm going to get some orange here. So I didn't even have to dunk into my paint to get that. It helped me out. Fire colors, warm colors, right? So I take my yellow and I'm going to blend toward the red. And you'll see that that looks kind of cool. Uh, you won't be able to see how, how vibrant it is until I take that tape off. All right, we are on number eight. This one was number seven. Let me get this out of the way for you. Wipe, wipe, wipe. And let's see, we are on number eight. And my next technique is done with a piece of saran wrap, a piece of plastic wrap from the kitchen. So what I'm gonna do is put a wet on wet coat of, of paint on here. And then I'm going to take my, my piece of plastic wrap and I'm gonna crumple it up and I'm gonna lay it on here. And again, we have to wait for the paint to dry in order for you to be able to see what happens, but I will give you an explanation. So let me wet my paper first. Wet on wet. And this time I'm going to add a couple of colors and plenty of liquid and put this out of the way. And I think I'm going to use purple and maybe magenta. Here's my purple. This purple isn't real vibrant. I might want to put a little bit more. Here's my magenta also. I'm going to, that's so much brighter. Isn't that pretty? And I'll go back into the purple and pull what I have left. But I also have, there's my dropper of purple. Maybe I'll add a little bit more. I've got plenty of water on here. Um, this particular brand, I'm not, I don't love the uh, black that comes with it. It's got a lot of a blue tint to it and the purple isn't very dark. This is almost straight paint. And now I can get a little bit of a grape color from it, but not a lot. Not a lot. It's pretty uh, pastel -y. Okay. So, but that's good enough for my purposes at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead. My paper is fairly wet. I'm going to take this piece of plastic wrap and I'm going to crumple it up and just set it over. So you see what happens, how it's got these kind of bubbles and wrinkles and stuff in it. I want that there because that's what creates this really interesting texture on our paper. But I'm just going to leave it, push it down. And I'm going to put it over here. That was pretty quick. Most of these techniques are using that wet on wet technique. And once they dry, then you get the full effect of what happens with it. But it's kind of fun to experiment and see what's, what happens. So let's see, I got uh, one more here. This is technique number nine. This time I'm going to be painting. I want my, my brush to be a little drier. I don't want a ton of water this time, but I do want a ton of paint. It's kind of the brush needs to be cleaner. So that's, that's why I do that. I stir, I wipe. If I can see that it's pretty clear going back into the container, then I blot. And if I see there's no color on my paper towel where I just blotted, then I know the brush is pretty clean and I can move into the next color. This one I think I'm gonna do in some greens so you can see. I'm gonna put 
a rather dark coat of green, plenty of it. I see oftentimes in my students' work that they like to put a lot, a lot of paint on their paper. And honestly, the more you put, the kind of messier your paper is because you don't have a lot of control over where that water goes, right? So you have and end up having a wet on wet technique. So this, you can kind of plan for it. I'm gonna put the lime green over here also. So you see the variation in the greens. This one has a lot of blue in it. This one has a lot of yellow in it. Blue and yellow make green. So these are variations just by how much of each of those colors they've mixed into these. But this one is the neon from the food color. They behave the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush. This time in order to put texture, I have a paper towel here, just a plain paper towel. And it has a bit of texture on it. You can see it's kind of been used. It's okay, I'm gonna saturate it with this paint. You can see that it's got a little bit of a pattern on it. So there's a couple of things I can do. I can blot with that paper towel and you can see it picks up some of the color on here. Or I can take the paper towel and I can just lay the whole thing down and it'll pick up a lot of that paint. And you end up with, you can see the lines on here. This is actually prettier than that, but that's another technique is by removing some of it, you get a different, uh, a different technique, a different pattern. Look at, you can even still see my finger mark right there. So that's picking up some with paper towel. You can also do it with tissue paper, not Kleenex tissue, but the tissue paper you use when you wrap presents. So the last technique I'm gonna show you, you need to be very careful when you do this. You may have done it before. On this technique, I'm going to use just my plain paints for right now. And I have a toothpick here and I have my straw here. So you don't have to use the paints right out of your bottle, but I wanna get little blobs of paint so you can see. I'm gonna start with the purple. I chose three colors that I like the way they look together. Turquoise, magenta, and purple. I like how they look together. Uh, you experiment and do whatever you like, but I'm going to create something that looks a little bit to me like fireworks. I'll start with uh, magenta I have here. I'm just going to put a couple of drops of paint and you know me, I like random, so I don't want them to look like they're all lined up or all the same size. So I just kind of randomly place them. And I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to blow. And as I blow, I can turn the paper in any direction, but it's going to create kind of a fanned out look. So watch. See how that one kind of broke, the little bubble broke? Um, another thing you can do, you want to blow gently because you don't want this paint going everywhere. And notice I have a messy mat. Depends on how much paint you have. Another thing you can do is you can literally pull the paint or push it away from the original dot that it had on there. That's what the, the uh, toothpick is for. You can do that as well, okay? Just make some interesting kind of blobs. You can create something out of it. You start to see something out of it, like that kind of has like ears kind of. So let me put another color down. There's my turquoise. And I can overlap them or I can put them nearby. I can do big drops or little drops. And even if a splatter drop happens, it's okay. Because this is, I like to make them look sort of like fireworks, but this is kind of abstract and it is whatever you make it of it. So again, I'm going to blow. Turn your paper in any direction so they're not all going the same way. Be careful if you get too close to the edge like that one. 
You might even want to tip your paper. Whoa, that one came right off the page. So that's why you gotta be careful. And again, my last color, I'm gonna put purple. Let me move this back over here so you can not see that bigger blob. Here's my purple. Okay, not as many purple ones, but that's okay. Blow some more. Oh, that one's pretty. Where they mixed right there, that purple and that turquoise, real pretty. Again, if I don't like that it's not moving how I want it to move, I can push it, pull it, create some designs out of it, intermix the paints if I want. This, oh look, I think that looks pretty. They look kind of like they're floating and flying through the sky with these movement marks. Again, I don't have to do it with my straw. Ooh, I got some turquoise there. I can do it with a toothpick, the tip of a pencil, whatever you happen to have. Sometimes I just pick up something that happens to be nearby and fill your space so that it doesn't look like you planned anything, but that you are intermingling colors. And fireworks don't stay in their own space, right? They move in all different directions. So that was number 10 technique, okay? So, as I said, I will let all my paints dry, and when they do, I will label them, and then I will video so you can see how they all came out. I'll show you a little bit more close-ups, and I will also show you how it looks on a different type of paper. I prefer this paper, and I used some other watercolor paper the other day, and the colors just, they look different. And the I did exactly the same thing that I just showed you, but they all look different, even though I used the exact same techniques, just the different kind of paper that I used. So I hope you give these a chance. Um, try them out and see how you like them and play around with uh, how you make them work together.